Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Thomas. So um, I, we talked about, you know, I remember from day one I said I shared that story about Ifanya and her mother because there was so much we can learn from it, the children and the parents, especially those of us that, are, that have grown children. I have three adult children, so um, and my fourth one is going to be 18 this coming year. Uh, coming year 2024. I realized that a lot of it ended up being about what children are not doing right and all of that. But I really want to come back and uh, emphasize the need for us to take things out of it. Yes, there are some things, oh, child, you know, if I shouldn't have done this, if I should have done that. You know, we need to grab something from it as well as parents. I want to emphasize on that. Speaking about, I think I will use this particular aspect of it to address it, the aspect of, oh, um, if I is serving juju, if I is uh, demonic, and all those kind of comments. Um, oh, sorry, in case you don't know you're coming across this, I will put a link to the previous video so you can check it out to know what the story is. This is a Nigerian girl that lives in America, and she has a problem with her mother, or they, they live in America. She They moved to America when she was three years old, so, and all of that, the police got involved. I'll put a link so you can watch it, it's a very long story. So, um, so going back to what I was trying to say, so about the, you know, the Ifani and the crystals or whatever spirituality she said she's into, I saw an opportunity for us as parents to speak about, you know, about that. So Ifani herself shared about the spirituality thing she said she's doing and it is the crystals and all of those. I even saw it, there's something that looks like an eye in between it and all of that. I don't know much about it and I honestly am not interested in knowing what the what is involved but what I want to speak about is we as parents I notice a lot of Nigerian parents a lot of African let's say Nigerian parents a lot of parents need to learn that you see the faith you try to put into your children it's amazing because that's what you want for them because it's good for you and that's what you believe in that makes hundred percent sense but when a child gets to the age where they can choose, there's nothing more you can do. If the one you have done since they were born was not enough to keep them in that faith when they become adults, if already, do you know what I'm trying to say? Whatever faith that you practice at home, start putting it in your child. You know so. When they get to the point where they get to choose, some can choose not to practice the faith they were brought up in. As or sad as you may feel about it, the maximum you can do is pray for your child. I'm speaking for Christianity now. Pray for your child to see the light that you see that makes you stay in Christianity. But you cannot force it on your child. I want to emphasize on that. When they're already adults to choose, it's just like you and I. Imagine our mothers trying to tell us, you must go this one or you must. You're already an adult. You chose what you are right now from your own free will. There are some people that are watching this. Maybe they were born into Muslim homes, but now they are Christians. Or they were born into Christian homes, now they are Muslims. Or they were born into uh, whatever, or Catholics. They left the Catholic Church and went to Pentecostal. Or they were born Anglican. It happens different ways. It gets to a point in your life where you get to choose what faith you want to practice. And upon all the things we discussed about uh, Ifani, that is one thing that we need to remember. She's an adult that can choose what faith she wants to practice. In that video, you can see, those of you that have not seen it, you can, I'll put a link, you check it out. The mother feels that this child is lost. She, she was even telling her that it's the demon inside her that she is praying against. Is that demon that, you know, she was, and she, you can hear from the mother's voice that she sees her child as someone that has been possessed by a demon because the spirituality the daughter is practicing is foreign to her mother. So the only then the thing that is a bit tricky then is should if Evani do it in her mother's house, we can say okay, you know what? If your mother is afraid, because the mother was afraid of what she, the mother was afraid of whatever spirituality she's doing. Even she said it herself that her mother doesn't understand it. Her mother is afraid of it when she went for an interview with her freeze. So the um, out of that fear that her mother has. Any mother can, may choose to say, you know what, don't do that thing in my house. And because truly she's living in her house, the mother, I believe, has the right to say, no, I don't want that practice in my house. Like I said in that video, if Ifani was squatting with a friend or somebody out there, 
and it's not a mother or a father. You know, like I was saying, we, we always feel like, oh, this is my mother's house. I can do what I like. But the truth is, at 25, if she had gone to an uncle's house or let's say a friend's house and she's squatting anywhere at all, and that person said, no, sorry, don't do that spirituality, stone, crystal thing in my house, I believe that she would honor that. But when she's in her mother's house, she feels like she, she feels that she can do whatever in her mother's house because it's her mother's house. You understand? So in that case, I would say because the mother is afraid, she shouldn't do it in her house. You see, heaven or hell, no part of the Bible says you can force anybody into heaven. Mm -mm. It is a choice everybody has to make individually. If your child is practicing a faith you do not believe in, you cannot force the person. You cannot force the person to follow you to heaven. You say you can force the horse to the, to the stream or to the river, but you cannot force it to drink water. You can't. So even those that are dragging their children to church, if you're dragging your child to church, they, they may follow you, male, uh -huh. they may follow you, but you don't know whether inside, whether they are receiving. You see, I want people to get what I'm trying to say. So it's not about the physical, drag them to practice this faith. Are they in their hearts interested in that faith? Are they practicing it inside them? When adults grow, we need to learn as parents to say, you know what? I personally would say, you can say, eh, okay, you are doing spirituality, whatever. You can try to say, do it in that room, I don't want to see it here. It's not what you want, but you let it be because they are adults. Don't allow it to become a problem. But like in that video, we can see if his mother is scared of whatever the daughter was doing. She didn't kick her out for that or anyways. I am speaking about there are ways to maintain peace and order in a household. Even when people practice in different faith. I will always say that's one of the things that I, uh, I like about the Yoruba people. In the northern part of Nigeria, they are predominantly Muslims. In, in the east, my side of Nigeria, we are predominantly Christians. That if you came home and said you have converted to Islam, my mother will cry. <laughs> my mother will cry. You know me? My mother will cry because it's so foreign to us in that part of Nigeria. Right? But if you come to Yoruba land, you will see whether you support the idea or not, but coexisting peacefully, it is commendable. You will see in your land, you will see that the husband is Muslim, the wife is Christian. On Friday, the man will go to his mosque. On a Sunday, the wife will go to the church. It's your when I came to Yoruba land, I saw it. Former governor of Lagos State, um, Fashola, the wife, I happened to know the wife, and I found out that the wife is a, a, a Christian, but the husband is a Muslim. Right? In Yoruba house, you will see, <laughs> I lived in Lagos, you will see that when the Christians in a family or even in a compound, when they are celebrating, they will cook, they will give their Muslim neighbors and they will eat. And when the Muslims do their own salah, uh, salah, the salah, they will cook ram, they will share and give their Christian neighbors. They are not practicing each other's faith, but they are like, you practicing your own, the other one is practicing their own, but they are all living and co coexisting peacefully. Because you cannot force another person inside them to practice another faith. I am bringing this because I don't want us to make it all about children know the hear word. This is that. Let us also talk about where parents have to say, you know what? I have raised this child to be a Christian. The child doesn't want to be a Christian. I cannot force it on them. The maximum is pray for them. We need to be tolerant. When I say tolerant, I don't if you know there are some words I prefer to use in some cases. It's like it's like, okay, realizing that that is not my choice, but that is that cho person's choice. And, you know, sometimes when they're living with you, sometimes just allow some things, overlook some things. I I'll give one basic example. It's very basic. Like in my house, the color that goes with my minimalism, white, gray, and black, like in the house and everything, the plates, the bowls, the, what's it called, uh, cups, the teacups, mugs, everything I try to... For me, that is the thing in my house. I have a particular number of mugs. I don't want more than that, right? And they're all white, apart from one or two that were gifts that did my children, my adult children bought me for birthday or whatever that was going on. But then the next thing I noticed was one of my daughters went and bought a... a, 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 a the one, got, one got a blue-colored mug. I thought about it, I was like, I don't want colored mugs or whatever in my house. But I thought about it, I said, you know what, I just let it be. Even though my eye was not, it was not, it was not flowing in my, my eyes. 
I let it go because I was like, oh, you know, she even ordinary mug. You understand? I let it go. But you know the problem? There is no place to put it because the space I have, uh, the number of mugs that I that we need, and it has its place. There's no place for anything else. Went and bought a blue one. There's no place to put it. Every time I try to find a place to squeeze it, I say, no, you know, I could let it become a big deal. Why did you buy a different color mug? I said, I let it be. Another one went and bought pink. I said, I let it. I was like, what did I do? I let it. There are a lot of things. I'm not going to say, this is my house. You must buy my white one. There are times when from some things are unnecessary. You know, I don't want this one to be too long, but I think it's important to come and emphasize this aspect about parents overlooking. Make we not go make this thing one-sided. You understand? And accepting that it's not what I would want for my child, but realizing when they've gotten to the age where you can't force some things on them, you have to realize that they have choices to make in life. That as we have made our choices, they have their own choices, you know, as well to make. And that's how I feel about that anyways. As always, I don't know what your opinions are about that. As always, whatever your opinions are, please yeah, put them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.